How are we all this morning? Isn't it great to be here together in the name of the Lord? Who knew that it was Palm Sunday? Who knew that it was Palm Sunday before they saw all the branches? <laughs> Very good. Who didn't know it was Palm Sunday up? No, no. <laughs> you know, we've been going through looking at, at different things related to focusing on the death and resurrection of Jesus. But we've also been looking up to looking at the events leading up to the death and resurrection of Jesus. Looking at things that have been very significant in the leader. We notice that before Palm Sunday, the anointing of Jesus by when Mary poured uh, on Jesus' feet and, and wiped the oil with, with her hair and anointed Jesus. What a great anointing for the king. Leading into Palm Sunday, but later on down the track, we have a few other things. See, this triumphal entry, it's good that we've, we've done some event stuff that's happened afterwards because we come to Palm Sunday, which was actually before these events, and this is the trigger. See, Jesus would be going, don't tell anyone who I am. When you realise, don't tell anyone who I am. And all of a sudden, okay, let it out. Because I know as soon as you let it out, they'll be coming after me. The Jews and the Romans, and they won't be happy. So he's triggered off what to many would not be seen as victory, but what we know as the most victorious thing anyone will ever see. The most victorious thing anyone will ever see. The greatest triumph, the greatest defeat, the greatest proclamation that I am king, I am lord, I am warrior, I win. So we have Jesus marching into Jerusalem. He's stirring up the Jewish leaders. He's stirring up the Romans. And, and we looked last week at the mocking. We looked at the mocking with the crown of thorns. We looked at the mocking with the purple robe. But we saw that all the way through, Jesus is King. In humanity, Jesus is Lord. In humanity, Jesus is God. And he shows that kingship all the way through. Though it be a crown of thorns, he is still the king. Though it be a, an old purple robe, he is still the king. And the ki robe, the purple robe is sign also of him as king. And he doesn't cease to be king. Do you know it started, really there started to be the murmur and the started, the real momentum started when he raised Lazarus from the dead. And there was a real stirring up of people. Wow, who's this man who raises people from the dead? Who's the, what these miracles? They want Jesus. And so we get to, so we have the week of Palm Sunday, then the clearing of the temple. He's teaching on authority. We have the soldiers and they're mocking and the, and the lead up to his, the prophetic death and resurrection of Jesus. So I want to look at five things. I want to look at Jesus as king, Jesus as victor, that we need to be crying out to God, the weeping and the praising. But we'll get to those as we come along. Well, I don't want to unveil it all right away. I want us to be thinking in the moment. And right now, we're looking at Jesus is King. What here in this triumphal entry do we notice about Jesus as King? They took, in verse 13 of chapter 12 of John, they took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. They are already acknowledging him with their voice that Jesus is the King. They can see Jesus is someone different. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's cot. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's cult. Found in Zechariah 9.9. Interesting that in Zechariah it says rejoice greatly. Here it says do not be afraid. But what I want is to look at the donkey. See, a, a warrior would be riding in on a war horse. Here I am. There's the war horse. But Jesus picks a donkey which is more the animal of peace. I, I mean, I can't imagine a, a warrior king riding in on a, you know, get ready, here I am, I'm on a donkey. <laughs> the donkey was a workhorse, it was a, a horse for agriculture, it was a horse for trade, it was a workhorse. It wasn't, it was a work animal, not a war horse. Jesus, but yet this was a sign of Jesus as king, riding in to Jerusalem. It being acknowledged, riding in a donkey as king. They threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. To put your cloaks out like that was to submit, to say that the person was king. The outer garment, it was a fairly thick, durable outer garment, it was, uh, yeah, something, and, and you know how, you know, we identify people with their clothing and the type of clothing. So I, I, I'll let you in on a little secret. I went to a festival yesterday and there's cowboy hats, there's boots, there's denim, there's uh, black, a uh, bl lot of black shirts, there's a uh, lot of t-shirts with stuff written on it and, and caps, you know, like caps that they've got the truck logos and things like that. You can sort of picture that I was at a sort of a different sort of festival and that I wasn't coming into, you know, to Baptist Church. <laughs> I was at Meatstock, I confess. But it, it was, I, I just was intrigued the whole time I was there that every, there was so much uniformity about how people look. But how we already sum up about people's identity by what they wear. Whether what they wear at work or what they wear, you know, um, around the place, uh, whether it be in their hobbies or, or whatever it be, whether it be uh, something that they do, their uniform, we identify people with their clothing. And it wouldn't have been dissimilar then. You know, those shepherds with the outer garments that would have been, oh, you know, don't spend too much time near the shepherds. So what they were doing is they were throwing down their identity. They were throwing, there was a symbol of throwing down their, their outer garment, their protective outer garment would have been effective for the rain and the cold. I'll throw it down before the king. See these little things along the way, they just, they just mount up and scream that Jesus is king. Do you get excited? Can you picture that you're there? And then the palm branches and the cloaks and, and the Jesus riding in on a donkey and the people shouting out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the King of Israel. It was loud, it was, it was vibrant, it was joyful. Do you get that? They were screaming it out. And when we're singing out, when we're shouting out, Oh, I'm sure that God loves that. When it comes from our heart in thankfulness to Him, He loves that. But you can see it's screaming out, He is King. Everything is coming to acknowledge that He is King. So King, shout of acclamation of the King, riding on a donkey, laying down of cloaks, 
waving laying down palm branches. So palm branches in reference to the king, but more importantly, reference to Jesus. As we've done. See, if you go back and look at the, the, the time around then, um, the Greek goddess Nike, yeah, Nike like the shoes, but no, Nike was identified with victory, with, uh, was the, goddess of, the Greek goddess of victory and had the palm branches. The Romans took that on and had Victoria, goddess of victory, and the palm branches again. But we also have seen back in with, uh, with Mac Judas Maccabeus, the revolt against the uh, Seleucid Empire, 200 years before this is happening, where the temple, God's temple is uh, desecrated. But there was a victory, and they, the Jewish people got independence and a freedom to worship. And there is a victory of the waving of palm branches at that time. And so you can see in the Jewish history that there is a memory of this, the, this revolt that of the victorious uh, independence and a freedom to worship. And there's this want for a freedom to worship right here. And we don't actually have about a waving of palm branches. In fact, John only here uh, in the next one. They took palm branches. That's in verse 13. Uh, there's only two references in the New Testament of palm branches, and we'll get to the other one later on. But it, it, actually, I'll go to that one. They took palm, palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. Well, that, uh, many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. So you don't actually hear about the waving of, of branches in relation to the triumphal entry, but. I can bet you that it was happening. Well, no, I can't bet you. That's a terrible way to say it. But <laughs> God's greater than I am. Thank God he uses people like me. <laughs> but I reckon they'd be doing everything that Jesus is king, you know, like you'd be at the football and, you know, when your team's got scored a try or whatever, and, you, yeah, you know, you, 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 people will flee into it and you can see their way, you know, they'll pick up, wave things, they'll throw things, they'll jump about and do things that they would never do otherwise. You wouldn't see them doing that out there. You'd think, my gosh. Either that or they're an excited fan who is listening to it on the earpiece or something, but, yeah. There is such a movement, such a, 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 a powerful force in all of this. And the waving of the palm branches to say that Jesus is victor. Jesus is the winner. You're on 100% winner here. He's done it. I, I, I use the word help, and it's not really the best word, but I often, this is when I hear Hosanna, I think, I think there's a part in me that says, help, help, Hosanna. Hosanna meaning, so they took palm branches and went out to meet him, went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the King of Israel. Hosanna, save now. Please save us. Save. Saviour. And I, in my heart, when I cry out Hosanna, there is an element of praise that turns into thanks. It's like when someone's drowning and they're crying out, save me, save me, save now, quick, 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 come, hurry, I'm going down. And you see someone coming along that you know can help. You know that will help. You know has the power to help you out. And it's not just a save. It's a you're here. Thank you. There's a relief. There's an acknowledgement that this is the saviour. And that's that Hosanna. Save now. Deliver us. Deliver us. Free us. The king is here. A 
as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Do you see we've gone from this big, in the middle of this big Hosanna. Jesus weeps. Jesus weeps. I don't know how many sermons you've heard on the tears of Jesus, on his compassion, but can we ever get sick of it that he would weep over us? In Luke 17, 20, he says, the kingdom is in the midst of you. He's saying, the kingdom is here. I am the king. And he is pointing to the death and resurrection. And the blindness there is an unbelief that has been going on, a suppressing of the truth that has been going on, a rejecting of the peace that has been going on for year after year after year as God has called the people over and over and over and over again to repentance. And he's going, the time is now. And while they're saying Hosanna here, in a little while the shouts will be crucified him. And Jesus sees the blindness as he sees the blindness in all people, all nations, and the unbelief. See, I don't think that Jesus here was crying toward, he's not crying towards the, the fact that he's going to die. He's crying towards the fact that they don't see what that means for them. That they don't see what it means to be the suffering servant. That they don't see what it means to be the victor. That they don't see what it means for him to be the king. That it doesn't look the same way, but yes, he is. And yes, this is the time. And yes, this is the good news. See, the blindness is not only for those looking forward to that day, but it is also for us looking back at that time. One of the things that I think I have seen the best when people come to Jesus is when people weep over their child, weep over their grandchild that doesn't know Jesus, weep over their friends and family, weep over their neighbours. And unbelief. We can get caught up a lot of things in this world, but when we see the unbelief, it breaks our hearts. Something turns inside us. And when we know that Jesus is king and people can't see it, do you get an idea of what Jesus is going through when he's leading to the ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice and he's going, can you not see all that God has put, all that I have put into you and bringing to this point and bringing for humanity and bringing for all nations and yet you're going to turn it into, you turn my temple into a den of robbers. No wonder he turns, you see him walking into Jerusalem, I'm going to turn that temple over. How dare you? It's a house of prayer and you've made it a den of robbers. Jesus weeps. Jesus weeps. <coughs> Weeping over. <laughs> Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Can you imagine the Jews going, The whole world has gone after him, you know. I mean, they exaggerate like me. <laughs> there was 10,000. 100,000, actually. Let's go even one better. They're exaggerating more like you see on the news, right? <laughs> you know, two people walking down, it's a major protest. 200,000! But this is where they think of. The whole world is after him. Yeah. What can we do? There's nothing we can do. This is getting us nowhere. Can you imagine their powerlessness? 
The Jews have been rendered powerless. The Romans have been rendered powerless. Can you imagine? They're heading down into Jerusalem. There's the Romans there. They're going, my goodness, this guy has got thousands with him and he's riding in like a king. The, the Jews are going, oh no, what are we going to do? He's even, he's even, they're calling him the Messiah, my goodness. Oh, rendered powerless. Look, but the whole world has gone after him. You know, he went after the whole world in a day, in a week's time. Don't you love that? He turns it around and he goes, I'm for you. The whole world. <laughs> Who has it, who's had it said of them that the whole world is going after them? What a, an element of praise that is. When, the, when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in, 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 in sort of timid voices because they were worried about what other people might think in their praise to God. And they came into, into the room and they went, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord because their voice might be a bit sharp or flat and they might just be a bit too left or right, too fast, too slow. Oh no. No, this praise isn't like, like we're worried about what people are going to think. This praise is is uninhibited. This praise is full rejoicing. This praise is beyond mob mentality. This praise is the whole world after him. This praise is so much excitement that they go, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the, is the king of Israel. Can you imagine it? Do we get excited by that? Yes. Isn't it wonderful? This is the praise that Jesus is deserving. And more. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Well, I love this one too. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And I tell you, if we keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Creation will cry out. The whole world will cry out. That is of, not of those who are in unbelief. It is all those who believe and see and know that Jesus is King. Amen. Yeah, let's give Jesus. have a problem with clapping, we're clapping Jesus and I'm sure uh, on the Palm Sunday that they were clapping like you'd never seen them clap before and cheering and hallelujah and woo! <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes, we have times of quiet and still and I love those times too. I'm coming up to the shadow service. But we have times of celebration and that is really what we are seeing here. And why I love Palm oh, Sunday, I love the branches coming in and it's just, oh, that gives me joy. And I can imagine the whole of creation going, Jesus is King. Can you feel it? The whole of heaven crying out, Hallelujah, Jesus is King. huge crowd joyfully praising the Lord. The Pharisees' observations that the whole world is after him. The time has come. Even the rocks will cry out if no one else does. So we have the king. We have the victor. We have us crying out to a saviour. We have weeping over unbelief. And we have praise to a God who is worth more than all our praise. But the palm branches, like the donkey, were a symbol of peace. The donkey was a symbol of peace. The palm branches, a symbol of peace. The palm branches were also that symbol of victory. Not only victory, but victory over death. So when you see the palm branch, think victory over death. That is Jesus. When you see the palm branches, Think also they were a symbol of eternal life. Think Jesus is our only way to eternal life. And when you think palm branches, 
there was always this symbol in the Jewish history of joy, celebration, and thankfulness. When we see the palm branches, let us be filled with joy. Let us be filled with praise. Let us be filled with celebration. Let us be filled with thankfulness to the God who came and died and rose again for us. See, the other I told you that I was going to tell you the other place where palms are mentioned in the New Testament. And for those, some of you who may remember, but it's in Revelation 7 verse 9. But I want to read Revelation 7, 9 to 12. And I want us to finish on this. In fact, we're going to say the last part, we're going to say the last part of verse 12 together. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And then we'll say the end of this bit. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. And before we say this, I want you to just read that so you know what you're reading. Read it. I'll just read it first. Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And this is how we're going to finish the sermon and then I'll pray. So they fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God saying, Amen. 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 Praise, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for the prophets. We thank you for the fulfilments. We thank you for the stirring in people's hearts, both one to a triggering to allow them to kill you, to allow them to suck, cause you to suffer, to allow for your death and resurrection, and to have victory over death. <coughs> We thank you that you stir people to praise. We thank you that you stir people to belief. We thank you that you stir us to a life in you, a life of peace, a life of victory over death and destruction, a life eternal, a life with you, a life full of joy, no suffering, full of celebration, full of thankfulness, a life totally with you. So Lord, we come, we wave palm branches, we lay down our cloaks in our hearts. We submit to you, the King, the Warrior, the Victor, the Saviour and Lord. Help, help us to honour you today in the way that you would want to be honoured. Responding to you as Lord and King. Thank you, Jesus.